straight back to Las Vegas now for the latest appearance by the new Puerto Rican sensation Miguel Cotto. His promoters believe him to be one of the most exciting talents on the world scene and he was looking for a tenth straight win as a pro against a man very well known to British fans, the former Commonwealth Super Featherweight Champion Justin Juco, the Ugandan now based in the USA. Here's round three. Cotto doing enough to win the first two rounds. This 21-year-old from Puerto Rico in the white trunks and he's looked in his career today absolutely electric, really smooth, very balanced and they've taken a risk that quite a few management teams and promotional teams wouldn't take by going in with the former world title contender Justin Juco in only his 10th fight. That's how much they believe in him and he doesn't look in any way out of his depth against Juco so far. Juco's a bit on the slide, having said that. They may be getting him at the right time. Certainly Cotto won the first couple of rounds here. Yes, Cotto looking at the boss so far. Just outworking, just squatter and stronger and just got a bit more in the fight than Juco. Good defence from Cotto was boiled down to lightweight. He was light welter earlier in his career. We were wondering if he was a future Ricky Hatton opponent. But I think this kid has got a sack full of talent. And you're starting to see it here too. The defeats are just beginning to pile up for Juco after he performed with honor against Floyd Mayweather lasting nine rounds as a late sub in a world title fight taken apart in the end and then he fought Diego Corrales he did well with him the IBF champion got beaten in the 10th that night on the Mosley de la Hoya bill but a um, couple of unscheduled setbacks in recent times for Juco the uh, likeable former British based boxer Michael Carter now very confident standing on the top of Juco just squatting strong and not wasting much doesn't look like a 21 year old does he his whole demeanor he looks really strong the defense is good too isn't it it is he's got that just kicks through the, the top of the gloves hands held pretty high and it's a, a good style doesn't waste much but does look strong mentally as well as physically nine and no so far seven by knockout this is biggest test by some way former amateur star at the Pan Am Championships, World Championships at the Olympics too, where he lost to the eventual gold medalist. Juco's eight years older. He's getting a bit long in the tooth and caught by left hand and floor. Three, will be administered. four, five, by Joe Cortez. six, man at three eight seven, for Juco. Eight. You okay? I'm okay, he says, but is he? The bell comes at a good time for Juco. I remember seeing Justin win the Commonwealth ground against Tony Pepp in the rain at Cardiff at midnight one night, and the Hamid Robinson, Bill the Knight, Prince Nancy Hamid, came world champion. He's in a bit of trouble here. He shouldn't be on the ropes. Yep, he is. He's getting hit too much, allowing Poddle to come at him, and there's the little short shot that had to go down. And that just shows something of the, the power of Cotto's seven clear wins in the nine fights. Right? Double the jab, up and down, double it, up and down, and then one, two, left hook to the body, back into the jab again. You hear me? One, two, put the power in the hook to the body, but you got to stay loose, Justin. I keep it. It all sounded good, all right, but time. doing it against this talented youngster is quite another thing. Well, it is. He certainly has a lot of talent himself, Jugo. 17-year-old Commonwealth gold medalist as an amateur. So he's got the skills, but, you know, as you said before, Ian, probably on the slide now. And he's finding it tough with this youngster. He's in danger of getting to that stage where he's used as a trial horse. That certainly seems to be the case here. Cotto, super confident. We saw him on a Roy Jones show, didn't we? And uh, he really took the eye. I certainly put uh, his name in my notebook after that. 
won in a couple of rounds that night. This was always going to be a longer job. We'd have thought so anyway. Should it go eight, incidentally? Or ten, rather. He's coming up with a jab, looking for the right hand. Toto. Doesn't move a lot, keeps his feet pretty firmly planted to the canvas, but looks for power in all his shots. Juka was always very good with the jab, lovely left jab he had, but here, he's not really getting close enough to really ram it home, he doesn't, I think, want to go too close to Cotto, knowing what armory the youngster has. That's exactly right, and that, that's his problem, he's not sticking that jab out with any authority because he's wary of what's going to come back from Cotto. Does hold wins, Juka, over... Good British fighters like Charlie Shepard and Gary Thornhill. Good left hook again uh, from Cotto. Another Puerto Rican star in the making to follow the likes of Wilfred Benitez and Wilfredo Gomez and a few others. Not to mention Felix Trinidad, of course. He doesn't look like a guy who's only had nine pro fights, does he, Cotto? There's a coolness and control about him. A latent menace, almost. Yeah, he's got a very solid style in with a pretty good defence. So it's pretty hard to open him up. You know, to get him to come out of that shell and always oh, he's looking to get his hard shots on. Legs all over the place, down again. Juko. His second time Four. on the Five. canvas. Six. Seven. You okay? You okay, says right. Juko. Are you, you okay? okay. Wanna okay. continue? Didn't answer Juko, he just sort of nodded, but no fighter is gonna say, no, I don't want to continue. Again, the bell comes at a good time for Juko, but I just don't think he can cope with the talent of Miguel Cotto. And I wonder about his punch resistance, which was never the greatest. Okay, you start taking out straight punches for me, I'm going to start this fight, you understand? Well, you heard the referee there, Joe Cortez, warning him that uh, a stoppage might be imminent. Look at this. Yeah, look at that, well, the legs, the effect that left hook had on Juko shows the, well. the power of Cotto. And really, Ian, you know, he looks like he's on a high and a nothing to go. The corner could have pulled him out or could pull him out in this round, really. Because it just looks like he's going to take more. Yeah, he was doing the boss and over then after that land, it was the, he was. And uh, a brief corner, if they send him out for force for more. Cool, controlled performance for Miguel Cotto, who looks to me like a certain future world champion. That may be a big call when he's only in his 10th pro fight, but it's just the way he goes about his work. I really like him. William, I don't think it's that big a call. I think that the chance might come sooner rather than later. They're not going to hold this youngster back. Yeah, one understands the need to protect young fighters on the way through, but sometimes you just have to believe that they've got brilliant talent and let them go, don't you? Yeah, you can't, you know, sometimes it's more of a danger to hold talented fighters back. You, you've got to give them a challenge and let them rise to that challenge. This is a good match to make for Cotto. And they've got the gamble right by the looks of it. The cab, because he's really in charge in a big way here. Against Justin Jiko, the former Commonwealth champion whose pride inspires into that good right hand. But I like Cotto's defense as well. He, doesn't take many either. You know why young fighters like this being involved in wars all the time on the way out? Oh, kind of a good defense to the head. He holds his elbows out a little wide, but you go unable to really go for body shots. I'm sure somebody is going to ask Cotto some more pertinent questions, and maybe sometime soon. But it isn't going to be just in Juco, and it isn't going to be tonight, Up from what we're looking at here. Picking the punches quite beautifully. And 
glad uh, Brody Fewers had a chance to see this fellow again. And I think Ricky Hatton, although Ricky of course will be up for fighting anybody, we're quite glad this guy's not in his division anymore at the moment anyway. I don't know if he intends to settle at lightweight or whether he might go back to light welter. For the 21, he'll still be growing, still be put on a bit of weight, so that might be difficult to, to keep himself down at lightweight, and I think that the move back to light welter will be inevitable. I think if I was managing a fighter coming through, I'd uh, keep him well away from this guy. He's got the skills doubling up on the, the hooks to the body and head and the right hand. He's going through the card with his punches. He's doing all of this, it should be remembered, to a very shock-warm looking Justin Juco. Who's in danger of sinking back. And he takes a big left hook, he doesn't go down. But great refereeing by Joe Cortez. Steps in right on time and says that is it. You're not taking any more of it. Cotto just looks really, really hot. He's only 21. He's from Puerto Rico. And I know we say it rather too often, but I think this fellow really is a star of the future. Miguel Cotto. Well, there will be stronger tests for him in the future, but he does look a youngster who's ready for those tests. Having said that, how many British managers or promoters would be prepared to take that kind of risk with a kid in his 10th fight, putting him in with somebody like Hugo, who'd been in with Morales, uh, Mayweather rather, and Corrales? Oh, not many, would they? And look what he's done to him. There's not many, but it, it, this is good to see, and this is, you know, he's taking the gamble. They're obviously confident of the talent the youngster has. You know, he's risen to that challenge and he's done it in good style and he'll be the better for that but that was a very good win biggest win of his career to date Miguel Cotto but make no mistake about it there will be many many more so I think we're talking about a stellar talent here in Miguel Cotto of Puerto Rico it's exciting Spetter but it's a hurting business they fed you Cotto in there didn't they I think yeah Juco certainly may be on the slide but that illustrates the confidence that you know top rank have got in Cotty, I mean, excellent, yeah, excellent, excellent fighter with all potential there, and only in his 10th fight, only 21 years of age still. Barry, do you get the idea that he will be a lightweight, do I mention he may still be growing, he's only mm. 21 years of age, yeah. previously fought as high as light welterweight? Yeah, it's interesting, I mean, obviously uh, the professional training is going to pack him into these, training much harder than ever before, and sparring a lot more, and that will drag his weight down, so he, he'll do lightweight, but he's also going to have a chance of going up to light welterweight. That left hook in the third round was a super shot. What I like about this guy is he's got a precocious talent, in with a double world title challenger, walks straight through him, and the left hook, look at what you're looking for this, in this guy is the compact punches, hits him on the temple with that left hook, but everything's very tight and compact, and he never misses the target. There's shades of John John Mulaney in him, and also a, a little bit of Edwin Rosario there as well. Beautiful punches at the end, fantastic finish, and you know, Joe Cortez was very uh, compassionate there. High praise indeed. What about the matchmaking? Does it underline the confidence the camp has in there, man? Excellent matchmaking. I mean, when, when you look at this kid at 21 years of age, you know, put him in Might have gone wrong there. We've seen Absolutely, that, that, that is the point, yeah. Absolutely Tense gone fight. Wrong. But you look at him, the kid's got his chin down, he's got his hands up, and he just walks through Justin Juco, and he's very, very confident in his own ability, you know, which is a lot about him and his team behind him. Thank you.